This is Ben Allen, founder of BC Allen Publishing Group and Tonic Books, a partnership publishing house. We made this interview for you. Why? Because it is our mission to usher into existence the world's next great wave of life-changing, world-altering books. One of those books could be inside you right now. And no writer can go from idea to bestseller alone. No writer has to. Be sure to check out the other resources we've created for aspiring and established authors and the dozens of interviews we've done with some of the world's best, brightest, and most successful New York Times bestselling authors, world-impacting movement builders, and influencers that reach millions of lives. Do enjoy. I'm here with uh, AJ, who I'm absolutely thrilled to be with. AJ, you've done uh, big things in the world. You're, uh, you've got, you know, people know who you are. You've got celebrity recognition. You're, uh, you're, you're creating really awesome things on a daily basis that are seen by millions of people. Uh, and you're also in the process, part of what's really exciting to me is that you're in a process of writing a book, uh, which is going to be sharing about your experience of your own breakthroughs and how other people can have similar breakthroughs. So I'm super excited to have you here. And, uh, I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, of course. So let me read your bio here and then we'll just jump into some questions. So not only was AJ the sure. original, original host of Hollywood TV Live on Fox, he has sat next to Kit Hoover as the guest uh, co-host on Access Hollywood Live and has appeared regularly on Good Day LA as both an actor and entertainment correspondent. From time to time, you can also catch AJ sitting next to the ladies of The Talk on CBS or giving fans the inside scoop on both the Wendy Williams show and the Wendy app via a weekly celebrity interview segment, which he produces and hosts called From A to J. Uh, Through his work with Bloomingdale's and parent company Macy's, as well as motivational speaking stops at high schools and colleges across the country, AJ has proven himself to be the guy, uh, the go-to guy for all types of live events, as well as television and red carpet appearances. Man, what an honor it is to talk with you. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) it's an honor to talk to you. Thanks for having me. I feel like I'm going to learn just just being in your presence. I'm going to like learn some really awesome uh, interview technique. Well, I've already, <laughs> I've already learned so much from you. So let's just keep this going back and forth. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Great. Well, so tell us about the book. I'd love to start there. I know that you're working on a book and you're in the middle of the process and uh, uh, the world is just going to be so blessed to have that uh, out. So tell us a little bit about what's going on, the contents of the book and, and your writing process. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, so I, I've had this, I think placed on my heart since I can remember. I've always wanted to write a book. I never thought I could. Um, and I, I grew up in a small town in Ohio and I didn't know any authors. I didn't know anybody who'd done something like this. And so I didn't, I didn't quite believe it was possible. Uh, but the last year or so, it's really just kind of been stirring inside of me. And I decided to sit down and just finally start writing. I kind of hit a low point in my life uh, probably about six months ago. And I just, I decided that, that there was nowhere to go but up. And the idea sort of came to me to write myself out of my situation, to actually write myself into a better situation. Wow. And I didn't know if that would actually turn itself into a book or if it would just really become a journal, <laughs> you know, my own personal private stuff. Uh, but as I started writing more and more, I realized that, that people need to hear these things. They need to read these things. They need to uh, connect, which is, which is why I do what I do in television. You know, I'm a, I'm a television host because I love people. I love connecting with people, uh, finding out what inspires them, what makes them tick. Uh, but what I realized is the piece that I was missing was that I wasn't quite sharing enough. Mm. I, was, I was the epitome of, you know, the Hollywood red carpet reporter uh, who shows like one side, but maybe was living a different life uh, behind closed doors. And I didn't like that. I don't, don't like the whole smoke and mirrors approach to what Hollywood is. And, and what I've realized is it's not just Hollywood. It's sort of the culture we live in now uh, globally, you know, to some extent. And with social media, what it is now and everything moving at such a rapid pace, I think that everybody's trying to keep up appearances. And I was doing the same and I got frustrated with it. I was tired of it. I knew it wasn't true or authentic. Um, so I decided to do something about it and I decided to start writing about it. And that's, uh, that's where I'm at now. Yeah, that is really, uh, that's awesome. And your authenticity is, is showing through even powerfully just in this moment. So what do you want to, and, and like what you're saying is that you want people to connect. It's not just connect. I mean, connection is certainly the heart of it to be, to be there for others in a way that's not like behind a disguise or pretending or trying to impress them or manage their opinion of you, but to connect with them in a way that uh, serves them and serves humanity at large. Is that, that that's kind of what you're up to with the book? Yeah, absolutely. I want to be able to inspire people. I want people to see uh, what they're actually capable of through sharing some of my stories, 
um, stories of my experiences, stories of others who I've come in contact over the years who I've learned from. Mm -hmm. um, nothing I'm writing about is unique to me. Not one word of it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, none of these experiences, these experiences are mine. Um, but these aren't ideas that I've necessarily created. Um, these are ideas that I picked up along the way. I put my own little personal twist on them. And through storytelling, which is what I do for a living, I'm a storyteller. I always have been. Uh, through that, I'm hoping to inspire other people to, you know, kind of get up off the couch and figure out, like, what it is they want to do in life. That, that, that dream they had as a little kid, maybe, um, or as a teenager or in their 20s, that maybe they kind of lost sight of over the years. You know, life kind of came at them and things changed and they, they maybe don't see uh, the potential to do what they once thought they could do. I'm hoping through my book and through my shared experiences um, and through this sort of dialogue that I hope this book creates with people that, that they'll see the look. It's never too late. If, as long as you have breath in your lungs, you can change. You can change your story. You can rewrite your story. And I'm literally rewriting my story in hopes that it will inspire others to do the same. Yeah, that's really amazing. Okay, I want to dive into a little bit of this content with you here. So first of all, what are some of the, the things that are inside the book that, that are inspiring? Not just the stories. Maybe there's a story in particular you could share in, in, in this sort of short time frame we have here. Or maybe there's a, a mm -hmm. philosophy or a way of looking at the world or something that you Because there's a lot of writers I work with and a lot of writers that will be listening to this that I think could use that inspiration. So is there something that... Yeah, I... So, now? So, so my chapters basically... Uh, they're kind of silly stories from my life that through a shift in perspective, um, I've been able to create uh, inspiration out of one of them. I, I mean, I have a chapter called the $81 beet salad. Uh -huh. <laughs> I have another chapter <laughs> called uh, the perfect desk chair, which is uh -huh. probably the chapter I'm most proud of right now. And the mm. interesting thing is as, as I wrote the chapter, I actually realized what the chapter was about. Mm. I started it thinking I wanted to tell one story. And by the end of the chapter, I realized inside my heart and also on my laptop what I was actually writing about. And this chapter in particular is about the quest for perfection. Um, I was looking for the perfect desk chair because I found the perfect desk, but I believed in my heart and in my soul that I could not start this book until I had the perfect desk chair to sit at. <laughs> and as this chapter unfolded, what I realized is that this has been a pattern in my life that I've not started a lot of tasks that were placed on my heart because I was so afraid to start without everything being perfectly aligned. Hmm. And I know logically that that's not even possible. I know logically that perfection is not attainable. I know that in order to um, succeed at anything, you just have to start. I know that, hmm. but I wasn't practicing it, you know? And so, as I sat down and wrote this chapter, about midway through, I was like, oh, oh, this is me. This is my entire life. I've done this wow. and this experience and that experience and that experience 20 years ago and 10 years ago and five years ago, and I'm doing it right now. And this has nothing to do with this chair. Absolutely nothing. And as I did that, I realized things started coming to me. My mind started opening up and I started remembering, this is not the first time I've seen this chair, the chair that I actually settled on. I went back through my search history and I'd seen it probably 50 times over the previous 10, 15 days I've been looking for a chair. <laughs> and I never, actually, I never actually saw it. I never actually considered it until I got a phone call from a friend in a moment when I was in a store and it put me into a really positive headspace. And in that moment, the chair was directly in front of me and it was on sale. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I thought, wow wow, this is so lucky. I just happened to find this chair. And as I wrote the chapter that night, I realized the chair had been in front of me all the time. Wow. And so, so it's little stories like that, little anecdotal stories like that, that, that depending on your perspective might seem silly or might seem like the most inspirational story you've ever heard in your life. Well, it's my got goal both. Is to, it's got both, really. Well, my, yes, that's how I tell stories. My goal is to use a little bit of silliness to open people up and connect with them and hopefully get them to a place where then they're willing and, and able to accept um, the wisdom or the inspiration that I'm trying to impart on them. Yeah, it's and awesome. And that's how, I've, that's how I've, I've communicated that way my entire life. That's how my family communicates, a little bit, a little bit of humor, a little bit of snark, a little bit of self-deprecation, <laughs> and then follow it up a little bit of inspiration. So I'm hoping that works in this book. 
Yeah, well, the story is really compelling, man. And I, and I, you know, we love silliness over where I'm at. I think silliness is great. Yeah. It's, such, it's such a nice, there's a friend of mine who calls it the, uh, you want the aha with the haha, you know, like you want the inspirational uh-huh. insight with the, with the laughter. Um, it kind of, it, yeah. it anchors in more. And, and I think that's great. Not only is it, it does it work as a teaching modality, uh, but it's also very compelling and it's very relatable. I, I, I mean, I yeah, I'm not yeah. what you're saying just across the board. Yeah. Well, I communicate in the way that I receive information and I'm not trying to preach to anybody. I'm not trying, trying to tell anybody what to do or what they're doing wrong. Cause it's not mm-hmm. my place. Yeah. Um, but what I am trying to do is just open up and share my experiences, be a little bit vulnerable, be a little bit self-deprecating. And hopefully through that, they'll be able to connect on some level and have a conversation with somebody in their life, in their circle, um, that will inspire a change, you know, that will motivate them. That's the goal. Yeah, that's really great. I love that story. And I think that that it's cool that you're actually writing about the, it's like you're writing about the writing process itself and you're discovering things about your whole life. Yeah. Yeah. Because well, I, like I said, I've had, I, I feel in my heart, I have a series of books inside of me and I have my entire life and I've never known how to uh, get them out of me. I've never known how. So what I'm trying to do is take a little bit of a unique approach. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to come out, come out with my first book as like this established author and try to convince anybody of anything other than the fact that, look, I'm terrified right now. This is really difficult for me. I feel very vulnerable. But through this process, I'm actually feeling inspired. And I'm hoping it will do the same thing for you because I'm genuinely sharing my deepest fears, my darkest moments, and writing myself out of the reality that, that I've been in for the last 37 years. Wow. And writing myself into the new reality that wow. I want for my future. Yeah, yeah. that is really amazing. I, I, I love how you're, you're getting me really present to the fact that, you know, writing can be a transformational experience in and of itself. Absolutely. I, I mean, through this process, I, I, I genuinely see the world differently. I see so many experiences differently. Things stress me out much less. I have, I just have, I don't know, I have a feeling inside myself that I haven't had in a long time. And it just, it just feels so authentic and I love it. Wow. Well, it's coming through, man. And it's, and to have, you know, just, I want to acknowledge you for your, I don't know if it's, it is bravery. And it's also like kind of working with your commitment to serving others, right? Like your willingness to break through these kinds of masks that exist in our culture to be able to share uh, openly about what you've gone through in, in a way that maybe feels vulnerable and maybe feels like a little humbling at times, but that, that's a real, you're taking a real stand for other people. Well, I'm trying to. I, I mean, like I said, I do everything I do because I love people. It's the yeah. only reason I, I work in television. I just love people. And I know that um, people see what I do as one thing. And part of that is true. There's truth. There's some really awesome stuff I get to do and some glamorous moments I get to experience. And I get to rub elbows with some pretty awesome people. Um, but they're still just people. Hmm. And, and, and so many times I'm told by people who aspire to do what I do. They tell me how lucky I am. Oh God, you're so lucky. And that used to anger me so much Hmm. because I feel like nobody really knows how hard I've worked to achieve the success I've achieved. Hmm. And for the three minute interview they see with Jennifer Aniston, um, that they see as lucky. What I see is the countless hours, weeks, months, and years I've been preparing for that three minute interview. Hmm. And so instead of being angry about it, I've accepted that that's, that's how they view what I do and what so many of us do here in the entertainment industry. And that's okay. Um, but I want to show there's so much more. Yeah. I want to show that my, my dream to be on red carpets and host my own talk show and all these other things is no different than someone's dream to be the best librarian they could possibly be in their hometown or the best police officer they could be in their hometown it's no different this is my dream that's their dream um but none of those things come through luck nothing we achieve in life ever comes through luck i don't believe in luck Hmm. i I subscribe to the oprah winfrey belief that luck is nothing more than preparation meeting opportunity Hmm. you know so that's what i'm trying to inspire because when, when you hold on to something like luck and you think that somebody has success because they're lucky you're never going to find success and then you're never going to find happiness because you always think, oh, that person's so much luckier than I am. 
But when you take luck out of the equation and you start um, taking accountability for the choices you've made that may or may not have uh, gotten you to a place you want to be, then you can say, oh, oh, I respect that. He worked really hard. Here's how I could work harder to get closer to the dream that I have. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, that's really great. And the book is going to have practical tools on how to do that. And, and like you were saying, these kinds of shifts in perspective. I, I, I really like that. Um, I've got, Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, it's really awesome. I think it's going to really serve a lot of people. I, that's part of the reason why I, uh, we set up this interview. Um, and then, the, the, okay, so I've got uh, other, uh, there's so many questions I could ask you about all that. And uh, I'm sure there's just like a ton of amazing stories you have as well, which uh, I'm eagerly waiting to see in the book. <laughs> But uh, I also want to set up the readers with a little bit, just because you've got such a unique skill set and it's something you've worked so hard on, on creating. Like a lot of the writers I work with, and some of them have gotten on some big talk shows, and uh, a lot of the writers I work with and the folks that are listening to this maybe want to know some of those practical skills of like, well, how, what do I do? How do I, if I want to get myself onto a talk show or if I want to get my book in front of large audiences on television, um, do you have practical tips you could give people for that? Yeah, absolutely. Like that is one area where I know that I'm really blessed and that, that is a, uh, that's years and years and years of work coming to fruition. You know, I, I have connections at every major network and I can get on shows pretty quickly, which is, which is really nice when you're trying to promote a project like this. Right. Yeah. I would say for those who don't, don't work in my space, who aren't on television for a living, um, use social media, use social media, create uh, short videos. You can create one minute videos and put them on Instagram or you can create three minute videos and put them on YouTube and do it consistently. Find a day of the week where you're going to release a video every single week and, and do it. And maybe, maybe you do a 10 week series and each week is a chapter and you just give a little bit of a little nugget about what that chapter might be about. And you talk about that for a minute or three minutes and you post it. Um, and it's, it's difficult for people to do that. I got really lucky where I sort of fell into the TV situation before I had to do the YouTube and the, and the podcasting and all the other stuff. I still want to get into those spaces, but I kind of did it the old school way. I kind of lucked into it, um, uh -huh. even though I worked for it. See, there's that word luck again. I'm still trying yeah. to learn not to think I'm lucky all the time. <laughs> um, but social media is free. Um, you get your iPhone, your Android out, and you shoot a video, and you start creating content. And, and the content that people respond to, that's, that's where you need to go. Would you say if, that? If television? you're putting out genuine yeah. No, go ahead. What's Sorry. that? I oh, know I cut you off. Go no, ahead. but if, they, if you're putting out genuine content, content that you feel very, very passionate about, and it's getting a response, then there's your answer. That's what you need to focus on. That's mm -hmm. your niche. That's your angle. Go there and start doing it regularly, even if it's just once a week or an inspirational little nugget every day on your Instagram story or, or on Twitter. Use social media because the thing is, <laughs> I just experienced this the other day. Um, people are watching. You don't always know it, but people are watching. On Tuesday of last week, I wrote in my manifestation journal, which I just started doing two days prior to that. I wrote down that I wanted to host my first award show ever, and I wanted uh, a really nice paycheck. I just wrote it down. Read it out loud a couple of days in a row. Three days after I wrote it, I got a call from someone who I, I do not know, who apparently I met two or three years ago, at a red carpet or some event who hired me to host an award show on Sunday, two days ago. I went and hosted an award show, a list celebrities got the biggest paycheck I've ever received in one day. Wow. And it, it was a five day time frame from the time I wrote it down. Three days later, I got the call two days later. I hosted the event and I had the check in my pocket walking off stage at the end of the night. Wow. Very cool. Is that it, it, you're going you're gonna to put that kind of stuff in the book, right? You'll tell that story. Absolutely. Ab and I came home that night and I started writing that chapter. <laughs> that's great. That's really <laughs> cool. So do you? So in terms of yeah. uh, so, so that's a strategy that maybe some people can apply. And do you think that television works a lot by kind of connections and and, and folks that you know, or is it like uh, know, what does the hard work completely? Work? Oh, it does. It works completely the, by connections. The hard work is first of all, well, it's twofold. One, you, uh, again, preparation meets opportunity, right? So first, I would recommend taking a hosting class, taking an acting class, an improv oh, class, a public right. speaking class. Go to Toastmasters. Go wherever you need to go uh, that makes sense within your budget. Um, and if it doesn't make sense within your budget, figure out a way to make it make sense. If it's your dream, you'll find the money, you'll find the time, right? 
get out there so that you start to interact with people. My very first job in television came from a girl I met in a hosting class week one. Wow. And those, those, those people I met in that class are still leading to jobs today. And we're wow. all now up together and we're all working different places right now. Um, so it's a matter of putting yourself out there because when you actually put yourself out there and go put yourself in a place of like learning, right. Where you put yourself into the mindset of, okay, I know that I, I have skills, but I am not skilled in this particular area and I need this to help me with that. So I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to learn what happens. And for me, it's God. It can be universe, love, light, energy, whatever it is that you believe in. Hmm. But when you put yourself in that position, a humble position where you're ready to learn, everything opens up. You'll meet people. They will come into your life that you didn't, people you didn't know existed, people that you didn't know were watching or were willing to help you. Hmm. And that's how you get the ball rolling. That's how I've gotten everything. I think I've booked in my life one, one job off of an audition ever. Wow. Wow, so when that's people really think wild. you have to have an eight when people think you have to have an agent or a manager or all these things to go get opportunities, oftentimes that's just either one, um, they're unaware of what what the reality actually is in the industry today. Mm-hmm. They just don't have the they just don't have the, the information. Um, or two, they're making excuses. Mm-hmm. We live in an era now where you can get your content out so quickly, so easily. Yeah. And and it's through through that and networking and building relationships, hmm. honest, genuine relationships with people have led to almost every single opportunity I've ever gotten in, in my, in my uh, career. Wow. Yeah, that's really great. And, and so and part of how you develop those relationships is by being humble and showing up where you're at and going to learn and going to study yeah. and being, being a, a, whatever, a, a student among students. Totally. And when you're in those classes, talk to people, get to know them, become Facebook friends with them, exchange phone numbers, because Somebody will have a project they think you're perfect for, or somebody has an event last minute. They need you have a plus one. You can go to the event with them. You're going to bump into somebody at the bar that's able to hire you for something else, or introduce you to somebody else. And also, it's this is something I learned later. I wish I'd known sooner. It's okay to ask for help. Mm-hmm. I thought I had to do everything on my own. I grew up in the Midwest. I thought I had to do everything by myself, or I was a fraud. Mm-hmm. And I've learned that it's okay to ask for help because I help people. I help people all the time. I, I can't tell you how many people I've met with for coffee and bought their coffee when they asked me to give them advice. And I just do it. So knowing that, knowing that I'm coming from a place of sharing, I'm not afraid to ask people for help anymore because I also know that there's value in what I bring to the table. Yeah. And I will be able to help them in the future as well. Yeah. That's so good. Well, man, I, I really appreciate that stuff. I'm, I'm also noticing the time here and I want to be conscious of your time, my friend. Um, that is all really, really great stuff. And I'm sure that some of those pieces are going to wind up in the book, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. At least I hope so. Um, well, let me end with it. Like I want to end with a couple of things. One is like where I, I know people can find you on TV, but are you going to have a place where people can find out about the book or, or like, do you have an email list that you're starting to develop or, you know, where can people find um, out? Yeah, I've been working on the email list. I'm working on a couple of uh, projects right now with a couple of different people um, trying to sort of create that. I don't have like the email list. I've been really relying on social media up to this point. Gotcha. Um, but on my social media, I mean, if you go to ajgibsontv.com, all the links to all of my social media are there. Um, okay. And every bit of information you could ever need to know about me professionally um, is there. Uh, and when, as we get closer, as I figure out how I'm going to roll this out, uh, there will be a game plan. Uh, there will be a very thought out rollout <laughs> and, and all that information will be on my social media. Yeah, good. So, so catch you on your social media for right now. Absolutely. Okay, fantastic. And the last little thing is um, what uh, maybe there's a new piece of advice you have right now, something you're just present to, or maybe it was something we already highlighted in the call. But if there's one thing you could re- leave these aspiring and established authors with, uh, what would it be? And people who want to like, you know, create something big in their life. I think the best thing right now uh, that I've learned just recently is consistency. Hmm. Um, I'm doing this thing called don't break the chain. If you Google it, you can print out a PDF image. It's a uh, basically 365 boxes in a row and you set your set a goal. Cause I, I, I always got so overwhelmed when I thought about the idea of writing a book. Hmm. I kept thinking, how am I going to come up with 
what, 60,000 words or 70,000 words, whatever it is that my goal is. How am I going to do that? That seems so overwhelming. So I'd always get so scared that I would just back down and not, not start. Um, so I started reading. I started reading. I read a lot of books by authors um, giving advice on, on just this. And a friend of mine referred me to this thing called Don't Break the Chain. It's from the writer store. Google it. And I gave myself a goal of 200 words per day. Every single day, no matter what. That's great. For one year or until the book is done. That's how this is working for me. And what I find is there have been a day or two, I think, where I maybe wrote three or 400 words and stopped. But most days I write about 1,500 words or more because um, I get into the flow. But it's the first 200 that are always so hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so once I get past that, it's easy. Um, but if you give yourself, and you can, you can write 200 words in a few minutes if you're really inspired. You can sit down for five minutes and write 200 words. Yeah. It's not that hard. Yeah. And they, they add up. And so that, that's probably my best bit of advice is to start small, break it down and work in little manageable chunks. And those chunks will add up to something bigger and something bigger, which will lead to a book hmm. if that's the goal. Yeah, very good. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. I, I absolutely can't wait till I see this no. book and uh, your ideas and your insights and your generosity and your vulnerability and your openness um, are all really admirable and inspiring. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. No, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. All righty. If you want more interviews like this, check us out at tonicbooks.online. In addition to other resources, we've made dozens of interviews like this to support aspiring and established authors who want to write, publish, and market their book with ease and impact. For more details, check out the description below.